Hello and welcome to Top Fives, the show of everything. Top Fives, presented by The Sex Effects. I'm Joy Prati. And I'm Sean Day. And, and- uh, folks... Oh, I'm so sorry. I cut you oh. off. I usually, I just, I do, I usually do like a Kevin Smith type introduction. Oh, do it, do it, do it, do it. Um, I, I screwed um, that up. No, you're so good. Now I'm off my game, though. Um, no, we have a really exciting, I think, nostalgia fueled show for you this evening. I'm very excited because uh, with us is a second Sean. Like we got two Sean's today. <laughs> yeah. Not only do we have two Sean's? They're spelled the same, which is wild yeah. and amazing. It's a um, rare thing. We're the, we're so the cool welcome, <laughs> welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for joining us. Hello, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy to be here. It's it's you are a good friend of mine, and Sean is a good friend of yours. And Sean and I have hung out a couple times as well. And I'm excited to be here on the podcast finally. And I think that this was the perfect one for me to start on. I think so. Um, yeah, we have finally, Sean and I, uh, was it last week? We did it. We took week. a bye week We took a week off and kind of planned out uh, almost half a year's worth of shows, I'd say. And, oh, cool. um, you know, action figures was on there, um, stuff, you know, other stuff. And we said, oh, yeah, let's do action figures next week. And I'm walking my dog, you know, a couple of days ago. I went, oh, wait, no, you know, who'd be great. Um, so, um, yeah. So thank you for coming on. This was yeah. kind of short turnaround. So thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited. Right on, right on, right on. Um, so Sean, for the people at home, um, if you kind of want to just kind of give a little spiel about either yourself or kind of your relationship to, well, I'm thinking now, I'm thinking now, we'll, we'll talk about your relationship to the topic when we get to the topic. Yeah. Perfect. Um, but, uh, if you want to just say, give a shout or say, Hey, to anyone, to any of the imaginary audience at home. I'm off my game. Imaginary audience at home. Um, I think that my my buddy Jason is watching and he, he, he he's a, we became friends because of action figures, which is like something really special. And he's probably like the one of the only people that I text every single day because we just go off on toys, off on life stuff. So I'd like to say hi to him. I think my buddy Will is watching. Him and I became friends from skateboarding. Um, and we worked at a skate shop together and we've been like best friends ever since. And just anybody else is watching, hey, I'm excited to be here. And like, this is going to be super fucking nerdy. <laughs> yes. Yes, it will be. I don't oh, yeah. think uh, could have put it any better than that, honestly. Um, right on. Very cool. Um, so usually before we get to our list, we'd kind of talk about things that have been in the news, pop culture, that sort of thing. Um, but I've kind of just been keeping my head. I mean, one, there's not much pop culture going on because of the coof. Uh, but, uh, there's, I'm not, I'm not really in the note. Screech passed away. I do know that. Dustin Diamond passed away, um, yesterday. Um, But other than that, um, Marilyn Manson's been canceled. About didn't hear about that. Why did he? What did he get canceled for? I I, I didn't hear about this at all. This is a great. Let's let's hear it. What is this? Evan Rachel, (laughs) Evan Rachel Wood uh, came forward uh, with uh, sexual abuse allegations and grooming allegations uh, because they got together when he was thirty-seven and she was nineteen. Okay. Um, And then a bunch of other girls came forward. He was immediately dropped from his label. Immediately dropped from CAA. Um, Whoa. but it's like it's Marilyn Manson like did you not or is anyone shocked by this you know what I mean like uh, you know you can say it's a persona or, or this or that but it's kind of yeah. like you know you know honestly <laughs> I think every time something like this happens I'm just fuck, I am shocked because and, and, and I feel like I shouldn't be at this point now but like like I'm I'm not the biggest Marilyn Manson fan but uh, what, like three or you know maybe like four or five years ago I actually w- went to a music festival that he was at and didn't I don't want to say I became a fan because I really didn't but that motherfucker can put on a show and it just kind of bums <laughs> me out because because I never I never really gave I gave him more respect for his like brain rather than his music yeah, um, yeah. in the in you know my adult life but like it was like damn this guy can put on a show so that that, that bums me out it, it bums me out when 
you find out that people are pieces of shit. <laughs> yeah. All too often, I'm afraid. Um, oh. But yeah, so sorry for the bummer. Yeah, we had a death and we had a cancellation. I don't know. Uh, is there any good news out there right now? Do you guys uh, follow that whole GameStop stock thing that happened this <laughs> last week? I tried, but I don't understand it. I'm not Either smart enough to understand <laughs> stocks. Uh, I guess long story short, it's like a bunch of people on Reddit came together and like inflated GameStop's uh, stocks. So it would be worth more. And then, right. I understand, as, But I don't understand how any of that actually works. Is You know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, pretty much wow. people were I able nod to, my head and go, okay. People were able to buy like cheap uh, GameStop uh, stocks and then it inflated. And then they were able to do like, they call it like short selling where they sell it immediately. And so they made like, I don't know. I don't know how much more percentage more, but yeah, they made like a lot more in it. And it pretty much like, uh, I wouldn't say bankrupted, but like it took, uh, yeah, it took money a lot from like some of the other investors. Um, yeah, Did anyone invest in Aerotime? No. What is that? Aerotime Technologies. What is Aerotime? It has about? both military and civilian applications. You don't know what I'm talking about? Wolf of Wall Street? Oh. <laughs> Aerotime. Street. Aerotime. That, Aerotime. That went <laughs> right over my head, too. <laughs> Man, I guess, is, is it a deep cut? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no, but you're, 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 you're like it's it, he's your your dude. He's my dude. Yeah, um, like <laughs> that's true. Not Leo, Mark. No, no, Scorsese. Uh, Scorsese. Yeah. Right yeah. on. Uh, um, I guess for me, Godzilla versus Kong got a release date, <laughs> and it's coming. Oh yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, Max, if right? we're going, if we're going pop culture, that's like Deirdre and I are ridiculously excited for that because it's just yeah. fucking monsters destroying a city we know it's not going to be a good movie but we know it's going to be a good time yeah i like that <laughs> i like that a lot yeah a movie doesn't have to be good to be entertaining i you know entertainment is all a movie needs to achieve you know what i mean if it's good that's right. a plus but entertainment value is is the the bare minimum of what a movie needs to achieve and sometimes that's more than enough yes. um but uh Right on. Okay, yeah, that's coming out. Yeah, it's, um, I don't, I don't, yeah, oh, just, Zack Snyder's Justice League got the March, whatever oh, release, release date. Too, huh? mm. March Are they something. doing now? Now I I haven't checked up on this in recent times. Is it coming out as like episode episodical, or is it coming out in one like four mm. hour cut? One four hour cut. Okay, good. Oh, that's okay. that's what I was. I because I first originally heard that it was going to be like like shown up. in pieces yeah. yeah and i was like that's fucking stupid like why would you do that to a film um like or i guess i mean it took me it took me th it took me three times like for batman versus superman though i i had to watch the first hour the second hour and the third hour like between over like a week <laughs> <laughs> that movie is just so bad i watched it again recently <laughs> Like I was like, there's been a couple years, you know. I've, let's see, and it's just, it's just not good. None of it so, makes sense. I think, yeah. I think you and I have actually talked about this before because we probably have. But I think the like, if we're gonna go just a little bit into that, I think the only redeemable part of that film is the Batman warehouse scene. Even though I think he still kills people, and I know you hate that, but I yeah. love that. <laughs> 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 it's, a scene. Scene. it's a badass scene it's a badass yeah scene, exactly sure. it's like if he didn't yeah. if yeah we could we could joey and i could go on and on about I, about, hey, about this it, if that was the punisher yes that'd be just oh. uh, but it's batman and mm -hmm. he's a little too you know even like in the comics um I guess Frank Miller's Batman is the most violent and the most hardcore and blah, 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 which everyone refers back to. But then you go back and you actually read Dark Knight Returns. Batman never kills anyone. He never, like, no. he can't even bring himself to kill the Joker, which is the whole yeah. point. Mm -hmm. um, he's not using guns. He's not, do, you know, he even says in a panel, you know, this is the weapon of the enemy. We will, and he breaks it in half. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Nolan didn't really. Um, kind of get into the more comic booky stuff of Batman but little little details like um when the Joker is overtaking uh the the Harvey Dent fundraiser at Wayne's penthouse or whatever 
and he that Joker thug sees Bruce Wayne and he clocks him and then he disassembles the gun and throws mm-hmm. it on the ground. That's Batman, baby. Yeah. That is like, mm, mm, you know, um, as corny as it is when he when him and Catwoman are fighting on the roof and he's like, no guns, no killing. Ha, huh. he, you know, Nolan maybe didn't understand a lot of the uh, more fan fantastical elements of batman but he understood who the character was at its core and at its heart yeah um which is not something i can say for Zack snyder um, <laughs> yeah, i can agree more dude. Well, yeah i haven't even seen i'm excited for the snyder cut because i never even watched justice league <laughs> oh you oh, have that's to gonna be interesting. if you guys no. want if you guys want a movie to watch you know and just giggle at and have a good time at because it's so bad uh-huh. uh Yes, Justice League for sure. I, I um, honestly don't even think I could get Deirdre to sit down and watch it. It's because because she wouldn't yeah. even finish. She didn't even finish BVS. We watched the first hour and she was like, "I can't do this shit." Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then... BVS is so <laughs> overwrought and dark, and uh, it's just so nothing. Justice League is such a. I mean, one, it had two directors, and those yeah. styles and those tones are doing this shit the whole time um but it and the cgi is so bad that you're like how they just rushed this they mm-hmm. wanted to get this out and forget about it but the snihards what i call them wouldn't let Warner <laughs> brothers forget about it um i mean from from henry cavill's mouth cgi to oh, yeah. some of the dialogue to some of the you know it's just you have to see it to like believe it and you're yeah, like it's a jumbled mess for sure <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna do it now i'm gonna do it now just to compare it yeah. to the snyder cut you know what we might have to have you back on because i feel like we might yeah we might talk about that movie when we, I'm sure, oh i'm all about it i'm sure we're it's, gonna, I'm, I, I'm, pro- I'm curious to watch it again but it'll be interesting to hear your like thoughts on it like as going into the snyder cut like like first time watching it you know what i mean so yeah I and it's it's great it's great because Joey and I have like our, our movie are like move. Like I love movies and he loves movies, but he loves movies for such a different reason to why I love movies. Yeah, and like, okay. like our, our, I wouldn't even, I would not say we do not debate movies. I don't think we've ever debated movies. We just listen to each other's side and it's just like, yeah, that's great. Like wonderful. Like, <laughs> but this is how I feel. <laughs> yeah. Cause, cause I think, I think we know in every, in any conversation about like a film we've had, we know that we're not going to sway each other's opinion on the film. Nah. Yeah. That, that, that it's like, it's a very, it, it's a very, it's a very respectable. Oh yeah. Respectable way of like, cause I'm, <laughs> I've had conversations about movies with other people and they're like, no, fuck you. That sucks. And it's like, Jesus yeah, Christ. It's very, right? I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will say I think I've come around because you're you hate the Last Jedi, right? Oh, dude, I fucking dude, fuck that whole. Fuck okay, that I've, whole I've come even, around. You, I've this, come this, around this, you know. So you've come around to it now. What made I you come still, around to it? I mean, because Ryan Johnson the Ry- will fuck himself. Okay, I don't. I don't take it that far. For, um, in, in Star Wars, he's a great director in other things, but he, <laughs> he, him, and um, what was his name? Abrams. Abrams had no, well, had absolutely no. But do you blame um, them or do you blame Kathleen Kennedy? I blame all of them because I mean, I, there's, 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 there's things, there are things that should have been done and could have been done oh, yeah. that are just, just like you talking about Nolan and like understanding Batman. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like, God, this is such a rabbit hole, but like the, the, just, just, just the fact for JJ Abrams, the fact that after spoiler alert, after Han Solo dies and they, they all reconvene again and you see Leia and Chewbacca comes back with Ray and Leia consoles Ray and doesn't, doesn't console Chewbacca makes doesn't no make fucking sense. sense. Yeah. Like, like, There's and so I just, you don't, things. you don't understand, like you have no understanding of this shit. Like you should not have directed this film. Mm-hmm. I think, I think Ryan Johnson could have done things a lot differently. I think Canto bite is that whole side thing is kind of a travesty. Yeah, I think yeah. Yeah. waste um, of screen time, but I don't think the Luke Skywalker stuff was his fault. I think JJ Abrams painted Ryan Johnson into a corner and he had to play the hand that he was dealt with. Um, 
why we never got a scene of Han, Luke, and Leia, and Chewie, and R2, and C-3PO all together again is fucking beyond me. Um, like, that's all we wanted. That's all any of us wanted. Um, that that would have that would have made a lot of people just just that drink. alone. Even if you even if you hate it, that would have made a lot of people like that would have made me happy. But yeah, I mean, yeah. not like for the entire thing. Well, and but, then yeah. you know, then you watch like okay, I I appreciated Last Jedi from a filmmaker perspective of like, you know, this guy was painted in a corner. He crafted this story, which I thought was pretty good under the circumstances. You know what I mean? Like, um, they were pumping these movies out two years. Uh, yeah. Where in the original trilogy, it was three years between films and the sequel trilogy or prequels. Um, and, you know, they all kind of knew what the others was, was doing. They were given autonomy. They were like, oh, we're not going to plan out the story because Lucas didn't really plan it out, except he did. It just went through multiple drafts and drafts and drafts and drafts. Um, but watching Rise of Skywalker, Oof. <laughs> the film actively insults you as not only a moviegoer, but as a fan or uh, as just a just a person that uses logic in their day-to-day life. Um so that's what really killed it for me. And then it made me reevaluate Last Jedi, which I still think is the best one out of all those. Um, I think probably Rogue One is the best thing to come out of Disney Star Wars, if not Mandalorian. Mandalorian, I'm still a little... Yeah, I know you love fight. it. Those are fighting words, Joey. Well, the, it's, what, what it's just I, that I had it never grabbed me. It never grabbed me in the way that I hoped it would. See, if and 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 I can understand that because like you haven't watched like Clone Wars and Rebels and, and I never some will. of and some of <laughs> some of the other things and like the love the I mean Dave Filoni is Dave Filoni is the fucking man. He I I feel like he could understand it like better than than George like at this point in time now, like sure. where characters have gone and just, just Fel- like Filoni just gets it. And he kind of built like, he's, he's like George created the world, but like Filoni, like these characters that are in all these things, these characters that like nobody, nobody thought, I don't think anybody ever thought that like clones would be a, like a facet of, Oh yeah, I wonder what they would like. You know, even if they like, if they did in the future, like you got to know some stormtroopers. But like, Filoni just made these abundance of characters like different, like different in their own care. Like learning to. I, I'm going on a stupid tangent with this, but but um, I was gonna say something else actually prior to that about some of the other stuff. Oh, I think it was the, oh, okay, going, going, but you said for moviegoers and the, uh, the rise of Skywalker, yeah. the rise of oh, Skywalker yeah. is, uh, is the only film at a movie theater that I have just flat out walked out of. Oh. I saw it. I, I saw it for a second time and there was it's still a like, second viewing. Yeah. Second viewing. Gotcha. I was like, you know what? I, I, I hated it the first time. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go into this and like, I'm actually, I'm going to go alone. I'm going to go into this and I'm going to just give it the, give it the college try and like, like put everything on the table and say, you know what, just give it another chance. You, you, you know, you went into it the first time, like knowing that you weren't going to like it. So put that aside. And I walked out of the film with like 50 minutes left. I was like, there's fucking 50 minutes left in this film. I can't do this. I, I I am not having fun with this. And um, I, Paul, you know, we've talked about this a lot on the show, but like, you know, just they stumble upon, they f- literally fall on top of a thing that Luke and Lando had been looking for for like a decade. And then she opens it and it lines up with the wreckage of the Death Star that shouldn't exist because it blew up, but it's an ancient Sith weapon that is the outline of of a Death Star that was blown up 20 years prior. How the fuck does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it does, it, it doesn't. And like, like with the, at least like, you know, what does make sense, the medallion and the, the Bloom and the Goonies with, with, with geographic formations that have mm. been there forever. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Oh man. So we could we could go Star on we could go fucking on and on about that. Show. I know we could. We could. We could. We could. All right. Well, 
shall we get to some lists, boys? Yes, yes. Yeah. Right on. Let's do it. Um, so we got two lists tonight. Um, we're going to be talking about action figures, and we're going to be talking about uh, movies and games that we used to love to rent um, when renting was still a thing. Is there a preference of where we should start? Ooh. Let, let's have our let's have our guests decide today. Oh, <laughs> I, I, we, I don't think we ever done this. <laughs> let's try. Let's try. You know. You know what? Let's do. I'm gonna be an asshole and make if people are watching for just me and waiting for the stuff that they know that like I love. I'm gonna make them wait for that shit. Let's do. Let's Where? do the movies <laughs> and the and the rentals. Let's well, do I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take up. I'm gonna take up their evening. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. Um, excellent. So, uh, Jonathan, I believe you came up with this uh, topic. You wanna? Yeah. Take us away. I'll start, I'll, I'll start us off. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, top five movies uh, that you would like to rent twice when you used to go to like Blockbuster, Hollywood Video, wherever you rented videos back in the day. Um, it was a huge part of, you know, entertainment, watching movies with like family and friends. And, and uh, you know, it's uh, it's something that, you know, I think, you know, especially these generations now are, are not going to really get because we have streaming and we have just everything at the hand you know at the at our fingertips pretty much so you guys what is your top five uh movies you'd like to you would like to rent twice go and rent twice uh we'll start off with sean how about you sean all right um i would i've I've been thinking about this for since since joey sent me the topics and i think i'm going to start with a game because I rented this game from a little mom and pop, like a t- video and video game rental store where I grew up. And I probably rented this game six to like 10 times. And it was um, Sonic 3, where you could, where oh. you first, where you could first like play as Knuckles on the Sega Genesis. Yeah. And I don't know why we never just bought it because we had Sonic 1 and 2. But like, I mean, this was like an every other week thing of, like playing Sonic three. And I mean, I was really young at this point too, but I mean, I was playing Sonic three, the first like five levels. Cause I could never get past the fifth level just over hard. and over and over again. They are kind of hard. They were hard Very for kids. Difficult. Like, <laughs> Side scrollers are no joke, man. <laughs> so that, that would be my, that would be my, my first, my first would be Sonic three. It's a very good number. I like it. Nice. Dude, like Sonic now. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you have Sonic and Knuckles? Was that maybe that was no? I'm well. That Knuckles was, the, was, it was in, the one. Knuckles. Knuckles was in Sonic Three, right? I believe so. But Sonic and Knuckles was another game where it had like a cartridge thing on top, so you could put another game on top of it. So, for instance, you could get Sonic and Knuckles, put Sonic Two on top of that, and play Sonic Two as Knuckles, who wasn't in. Sonic oh, 2 yeah, originally. Oh, yeah. So cool. I didn't know so that. Cool. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, no, yeah. I def- okay, it was Sonic 3 for sure because I didn't even know that that kind of technology existed back then today. <laughs> there was so much of that cool, you know, yeah. like like um like a Game Shark game was sharks, a, a similar dude. kind of thing. Uh, cheating for days. Oh, yes. <laughs> We're getting nostalgic days. now, kids. Oh, yeah. Um cool. Sean, you want to keep going? Yeah. Uh, oh, 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 sorry. oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay, this is going to happen is that... a few times, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, I should have specified. I was talking to Sean P, but we, yes. we usually go all the all We five. usually do the whole list and yes. then. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, my God. Yeah. Whole... Okay. So. Because otherwise guess... we'll be here for eight hours. It, it, we've tried it before. It. it yeah. uh... <laughs> <laughs> that definitely. Okay. That definitely helps then. Okay. So my, my fourth, I guess, would be because I guess I'm tearing at four, five, three, two, one. Um, would be scary movie oh, because yeah, okay. as a like this is there's a little kind of funny story behind this so there was a long's drugs in the town that i grew up in yeah we're, we're really getting nostalgic to who fucking remembers yeah. long's drugs well, i do um <laughs> woolworth shit and they i mean i must have been maybe seven and they were like they rented me this film like a seven-year-old was renting, like I would go in with the little card and some cash and my mom, and she just didn't really understand what I was getting. And I would rent scary movie. Like th- I did it like three or four times because I thought it was hilarious. 
and then came back to it around high school and realized, holy fuck, that is the like, how did how did somebody let a child rent um, scary movie four times? Yeah, <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah, I had a sort of similar kind of thing. It was, I think it came out like the day I, you know, we finished sixth grade or something like that. Okay. And my folks took me and my brother, Matt, to the, the drive-in. We Have we been to a drive-in? I think it might have been our first experience at a drive-in. And they'd seen the previews for Scary Movie. Oh, it's like going to be like Airplane or the Naked Gun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, the only thing I remember is them like covering our ears the entire time. Um, like, like, why didn't we just leave? It was just, it was a painful like hour and a half of like, no, no, don't let them listen. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. like, um, don't look, don't look at that. Um, so yeah, but I like it. I like it. So yeah, that uh, was, yeah. I guess that was number four. I'm, I'm going to confuse myself. Okay. Number three would be another game. And it was Echo the Dolphin for PlayStation. Hey. Or no, not PlayStation, Sega Genesis. Sorry, Sega Genesis, Echo the Dolphin. I remember that shit. Um, and I only liked getting it because I, um, I loved killer whales. And you could like unlock a killer whale at some point. And I only ever did it like one time. I like could, you had to get like three crystals to unlock the killer whale and play as the killer whale. Cause I was like a free willy fanatic. And it was like a game where you could be a killer whale. I only did it like one time. And it was like the last time that I figured it out, but it happened. And yes, Echo the Dolphin was a game that I rented way too many times for no reason. Cause I <laughs> honestly yeah. can't, I can't, I can't even, I don't, I couldn't even tell you right now what the premise of the game is because the premise of the game was just getting the killer whale to me. <laughs> yeah. You kind of just, I just remember you swimming along and you send sonar and that was kind of it. Mm -hmm. You like kill so, the little, the little crabs. This sounds so interesting. I've never played this game. So I've, I, this is so <laughs> crazy. A, a game, like a game where you play as a whale. Like no, you, play, you, you, you play as a dolphin or a dolphin. You sorry. could, you could you could go and unlock a whale, but you would you could like do flips in the air and then you're back under the water and then like what? you know I think squid would attack you or something I don't know what so that is that is another one that I <laughs> um, rented way too many times as a child. That's a, <laughs> which that's which a fun one, which kind of leads going from like with killer whales kind of leads into another one so they were i guess my my number two um was a i could i don't know exactly what it what it's called but it was like a nat geo documentary about killer whales yes. and it was it was quoting it, it was like we had it quoted as the the r-rated killer whale movie because uh -huh. the first time that i rented it the the killer whales are um like killing the baby seals on oh. um off the coast of i believe argentina on like a really special beach which i know a lot more about now but they would you know they they beach themselves grab the little seal fucking flip it in the air and they're fucking around with it there's blood all over the place and like as a little kid after watching free willy like you know free willy was a lovable whale like, and i'm seeing that. this i'm like crying freaking out and then uh, my mom rented me that and then I got my dad to rent it for me another time because I was like, I'm like, I think, Dad, I want this one because I'm, like, I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. Just traumatized again, fucking screaming, crying, like, why is he doing that? <laughs> Fair. Oh, so that's that. that's traumatizing. Yeah, it was especially especially going from Free Willy. Yeah, Free yeah. Willy to that. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Hollywood He's movie to like legit like real real life <laughs> whale stuff. <laughs> he wasn't ready, and I, I was not ready. Um, <laughs> and then okay, so my last one for movies that got to rent twice. Funny enough, this is a movie that Deirdre and I have rented like two or three times now in the last year oh. because so we've gone like digital with our movies don't really have any like blu-rays or dvds anymore and this particular film you can't buy on the platform that we we have we use voodoo um and you can't buy this film but you can rent it from voodoo 
and it's fucking white chicks. <laughs> <laughs> Freaking white chicks, yes. And oh, so, man. like, it, it's just it's our it's our happy like it's it's our it's our like movie that we need to like when when we need a good like laugh and just like a like a smile and just poking you know just poking fun at fucking stupid white people and like we yeah so we rented that in the last year like three times just as like a silly thing because i love that film i love that film since i was a kid um and like deirdre as an adult has really come to enjoy it so that is my 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 number one um movie that we rent twice <laughs> to this day i like that i like that a lot everyone's got to have those those movies you know those mm-hmm. the those are my favorites dude i like that Always. i like that right on okay. nice list good list sean Thank you, thank you. I'm, 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 I'm quite proud of it. There's some nostalgia and some like stupidity of, yeah, we've fucking rented a film three times in 2020. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty wild. <laughs> it's like <laughs> what? Um, very good, very good. Thank you, Jonathan. Would you like uh, you to go next? Or would you like I to go next? Uh, I'll go next. I'll, okay, I'll, you're I'll gonna go next. My list real quick here. Um, uh, let's see here. Games. I I feel like I rented a few games. I just can't remember too many off the top of my head. But uh, I think the one that comes to mind. I remember they had um, uh, what you gonna call it? Um, uh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day was one that I never owned. But I rented, mm. and for that specific reason, playing all the games like the was it like the capture the flag or, or not capture the flag? Is it capture the flag? Or yeah, there was capture, capture the, the flag. flag. There was um, there's there a lot. There's so many there's mini so many, games, and it's it's like such a uh for the time it was such a like uh, uh racy yeah risque. it was yeah, very risky like <laughs> and maybe maybe I, I got probably it for my birthday. I was like eleven. And, and that's the thing too. It's like I I ended up always renting games that like you know because Joey and I you know hanging out you know Joey had some of the games or systems that you know I didn't have one or whatever and so we would play games at his house and I'm like dude this game's yeah. awesome like I want to rent this now and like so and that's the cool thing about renting games was just like you had your time with it unless you re, you know went back and re rented it so it was it was such a it's just so different when you experience it that way I guess you have like that limited time yeah, with it exactly. And, um, and and for those reasons, with uh, you know, Cockers Bad Fur Day, it was it had like all those multiplayer kind of things, so I could play with my brother and you mm-hmm. know, just like all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, Cockers Bad Fur Day. That's uh, a good one. Five. Yeah. Uh, number four. Um, got some class, kind of classic movies, um, but I, I remember watching these just like a ton. Um, holiday season, Home Alone uh, was a big one. Um, I think that was before. We like, I mean, I think we had a VHS player, um, but we never owned Home Alone. But it was like one of those. It's like the traditional holiday movie, like that we would yeah. pick up on during the holidays. And I always thought it was really funny. It was one movie that I think you know most of my family, all of us, kind of enjoyed it in the family. And uh, it's still like I watched. I actually just watched this uh, thing on Netflix, uh, the movies that made us. Have you guys seen that? Yeah. Series. They did one on Home Alone, and I thought that was very interesting. How they you know, how the movie kind of came together and it was a little rough, I think trying to get the movie made, but um, mm-hmm. it, 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 you know, when I think about it now, it was very, uh, you know, I, I could kind of consider it timeless at times, you know, it, it still makes me, you know, during the holidays, it makes me feel a certain way. And, um, you know, I think it's always a really funny movie to like, just laugh, you know, laugh out loud and, and just kind of joke around with it. So home alone. Yeah. For I- yeah. <laughs> very good. Uh, number three, I've got, uh, I've kind of reordered these a little bit. Number three, I've got this movie. This is kind of a weird guilty pleasure movie. Um, and this is kind of between my brother and I, Simon and I, uh, is this movie called the pest? Have you guys ever heard of this movie? The pest. John Leguizamo. Jo- it's, it's pretty much I... the most, have you seen it, Sean? I, I had a friend in high school that pestered me to watch this film so many times and I never actually watched it. And I feel like such a piece of shit. And now it's being no, brought it up in good. life again. And I was like, the friend that pestered me to watch it. 
And I think I only <laughs> I actually did, and it, our friendship best. suffered for it. <laughs> it it it. I'm sure it doesn't probably stand up now, but it was the most. It's like it's pretty much the the premise is like the most dangerous game, like you know, man hunting man. Um, and John Leguizamo <laughs> is the is the guy who's being hunted, and he's just this most. I mean, he's super annoying in the movie, and you know that's his character is like he's just kind of like a smart ass and. Um, you know, he's just doing all these sorts of weird and, you know, mannerisms and stuff. But, um, anyways, yeah, the movie was just so like weird and ridiculous. And, um, it, I, you know, I, maybe I didn't know it maybe when I was that young, I, I maybe didn't know about the most dangerous game, you know, the kind of, you know, the movie and the, I guess the books. Right. So, uh, this concept was really strange and just like, man, this dude is like going to be hunted by this guy. <laughs> But, he, you know, of course, he's John Leguizamo. So he's like, you know, he's just acting a fool. And, you know, half the movie, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm being hunted. Like, you know, he kind of brushes it off. But then, you know, it starts to get a little more real. And um, but I don't know. It was just one of those like guilty pleasure movies that like my brother and I just like laugh so much every time we put it on. And it was uh, awesome. the guys, the, the like the two guys that were hunting or the one guy who's hunting um, John Leguizamo's like main character. He's like German or something or like Austrian. So he had this like very menacing, you know, kind of gem, you know, it's, hey, I'm going to get you. Like, it's just like <laughs> all these like weird, I don't, I, like if I watched it, I'm sure it today it would be just like crazy ridiculous. But I, I don't know. I, I feel like that one we rented like a few times just because it was that funny to us at the moment or at that time. So, um, yeah, the pest. I'm going to I'm going to watch that now that because I had no idea what it was about. I had like I only I only know the the cover of the film. Like the main cover of the film, and yeah. he brought it to school. It's he like brought it to school down one day at him. And, and like gave yeah, it to it's someone like to watch. And he was like, <laughs> vibrant like cover. It, I'm sure it's like super annoying, but um, I don't know. I just thought it was hilarious, and um, you know, that's that was so funny about like you know renting movies and watching like you know with my my sibling, my brother, like you know, kind of just enjoying something for what it was. Um, but yeah, cool. best. Uh, that movie almost about? feels like it could have been a Poly Shore joint, you know. Yo, I can kind of see that too. Yeah, like him being yeah. cast as that character. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what am I on? Two, right? Two. Two. Um. Oh man, this one I always love this movie. Uh, the Princess Bride, um, was one that I remember. I think the first time I watched it, it was a it was a rental. Like I think my my uh, my parents rented it, and I watched it for the first time. And I still love this movie. It's it's still like such a nice uh story it's got so much you know just like um in the beginning when the you know the grandfather's talking to his grandson you know it's got so, you know romance it's got all the different like genres in it <laughs> and you know and it's true it's got so much in it and you know it, it was you know made in the 80s but it just you know for me it still kind of holds up as a really you know kind of nice fantasy action love you know love story yeah. it's got a lot of you know adventure and and mystery in it and uh, I don't know. It's just like a nice heartfelt movie. And, you know, I always feel you know good watching it. And I remember, yeah, I think when we rented it, we, you know, I ended up kind of trying to convince my parents to like rent it again. And uh, yeah, it's, it's become one of my favorite movies to this date, too. So I like Princess that. And, and, and Andre, Andre the Giant. Yeah, Andre the Giant, too, man. Oh, no, 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 yeah, was, oh man. Yeah, there's some standout, standout moments in that movie. Um, and then oh, my yeah. last one is, uh, of course, a movie that I still love so much, and I'm sure I've rented it quite a few times, uh, was Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Last Ark, um, which was before I owned it and, you know, before I had it, you know, probably, I think I had it on VHS, but probably DVD was the next uh, version I had of it. But, um, yeah, watching Indiana Jones, like, for the first few times and, you know, loving that character and the adventures he's on and, and just the kind of, uh, you know, kind of person he is. He's smart. He's adventurous. There's all these things that go into it. And uh, kind of like Princess Bride, it, it's such a uh, well-rounded movie. It has so much to offer in it. And um, it's one of my favorite out of the series. I love the first Indiana Jones movie. And, uh, yeah, it's one I rented quite a bit. <laughs> so there you go. Indiana Jones. Wonderful. Great Dr. List. Jones. Yeah. Good list, Shawnee. Man. Now I'm curious about Excellent. yours, Joey. What kind of movies? It's going to be a very good list. Um, twice. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know about you guys. Was it was it um, was it Hollywood video? For, I was Hollywood. Hollywood videos where I rent. 
did you guys do Blockbuster or like every there was Ultimate Hollywood, Video? There's... I think Blockbuster was my main one from where we were living, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. There were, was... there's four, there's four for me. There was like the little mom and pop um, where I grew up. And then there was the Long's Drugs when they started, they had like a whole section of rentals. And then when we moved to Sacramento, there was only a Hollywood video um which hollywood video holds a very special place in my heart because Same. that is where I, I i only rented them once because i purchased them after but like as 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 a young like i think it was like nine is where hollywood videos where i rented um empire strikes back and return of the jedi and was oh, the first time okay. that i had seen those um and then that went out and then there was a blockbuster so like i've got like little sections of my life where and now apparently I'm fucking renting from Voodoo for white chicks. So <laughs> hey, there, there you go. It comes full circle. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, we were, so we would, our Saturday ritual, we'd go to four o'clock. We'd pick up my nan. We'd go to four o'clock mass after mass. We'd go to Applebee's and Westlake. And then from there we would go to Hollywood video every single um, Saturday night, if not Friday night. And uh, that was, you were, planning the rest of your weekend right you either got a game and a movie or two movies or you know and you know you'd watch the movie more than once and you'd play the game all weekend long you'd pick out a couple of things of candy and that would last you the weekend and man oh, yeah. mm, i long for those days again you know um especially being able to rent video games what a game changer that was you know you can't do that yeah. anymore um well, they got anyway. Gamefly. That's does that still exist? Gamefly? <laughs> yeah, I see ads all the time. I mean, yes, but I like I want to go to a store and be like, okay, mm, you know, yeah, this one, you know, like. But yeah, yes, that's, I, I. That's true. I, as someone who never partook in the the uh, disc space of Netflix, I've only ever had mm-hmm. Netflix streaming. Okay. I just like, I don't know. I don't want to wait for something in the mail and then have to mail it back. That like the thought of having to mail it back just sounds like I'm good. It's <laughs> I'm there, that lazy. There are there were many steps because we we had a Netflix thing going into it. So my my first Netflix experience was through the Netflix mailing, but and then when I got an Xbox 360 with internet, you could get the Netflix app and it was just this net. It was just Netflix. There, there. You couldn't search through anything. You'd have to go into your account online and add things to your like. I want to watch this on. Yeah, you'd have to. Yeah, you'd have to add it to the queue. That's and then really it would cool. Pop, it would pop up on your queue, and I remember that is how. That's how I did like the first ten seasons of South Park. Like in order was through was through that I because it was that. it was oh, the wow, only way okay. to to get it. And so yeah, that like and and you know what it fucking did suck because my parents ran the netflix account and they were only getting shit that they wanted to watch and it was very seldom that like the the thing that i would put in the disc queue would come through and (laughs) so it fucking did suck so you know netflix thank god actually i think netflix still does do um they do physical they do they still do that as far as i i'm (laughs) almost positive yeah um Whoa. well there's a lot of places that don't have internet still um yeah, we don't think true. about it but yeah. um i don't know though it's wild to me because i have i've bragged about it no i'm bragging i'm bragging i've got netflix hulu hbo max stars showtime criterion amazon oh. prime disney plus thank you sean um <laughs> I had Apple Plus for a year. I think I just canceled that. Anyway, my point is I've also got 1,500 DVDs and Blu-rays. I watch less now than I <laughs> ever have before. Now you know it's what? I go to uh, YouTube. Yep. I'm the exact. I'm actually the same. I was just thinking about that the other day. I'm the same way. I'm like, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm try, you, know, you know, once in a while, you know, we, I get together with my, my roommates and stuff and we organize like a movie night we select we we pick a movie together but uh yeah that's that's been tough man there's a lot of options out there and i I do miss the days where you're just like that's your trip to the video store pick out that one movie or that one game like that's such a huge that was such a huge thing part of your weekend or or week 
I miss it. I miss it I'm a lot. Scared. So with that, can, can I interrupt? Can, can, can I can I interrupt oh, yeah. one more time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. So funny enough, one of my best childhood friends, he's like my older brother, lives in Bend, Oregon, where the last living blockbuster is. Oh, and yeah. On I believe on Tuesdays, if you go to the Papa Murphy's, which is right next door, and get a pizza, you get a voucher for a free rental. So like twice a month, he will go to the Papa Murphy's for a pizza, get a voucher and rent a film like some mist- like, well, he's, he's, he was like, I, I only get like old shit that that either isn't streaming or that I just kind of want to throw into my DVD player. And he was like, I will go like twice a month and do this and get a free rental and like go and rent it. And he's like, he's like, I have I've ended up having to pay because I just fucking forget that I have a rental and then come across it again. Oh God. And he goes and brings it back or like gets the email about it because it's still a thing. But I have a friend that still rents from Blockbuster a couple times a month. I love that. I love that. Wow. That's super cool. <laughs> what? You know, and that, that makes me think too. The other big reason I don't like throw in my discs is because the only way to watch them is through my PS4 and that PS4 is loud as fuck. It's just, it's like, I can't even hear the movie, which sucks because Blu-rays by and large look better than 4K streaming. Yeah, um, I can agree with that. Physical media is always going to look better. So it's it's a bummer that it's like, until I get a quieter machine, but it's like, am I really going to invest in a thing that can play physical media? Eventually when I, when I cross over to the PS5, I will get, get it with the disc player, even though I don't want to. But, but I mean, Joey, let's be real. You could probably go on Amazon and get a Blu-ray player for maybe 40 bucks. Are they, like are they that cheap now? Absolutely. Should I, oh, I can look it up for you and maybe, I maybe. mean, maybe, um, <laughs> but, but again, like I don't need it. You know what I mean? Like no, that's, it's just, that's it would be so too. silly. It'd it's be like so just silly. Like you're watching you, you are, you are watching less than you ever have. Yeah. 50 bucks Blu-ray player. Yeah. Yeah. Um, damn. Well, maybe I'll think about it. Um, I'm, eventually I'll get to a, a PS five and that's, I've heard that's much quieter. Um, anyway, onto my list. Joe's list. N- number five. Um, super smash brothers melee. Um, oh, when shit. we got, yeah, dude. when we got the GameCube we couldn't afford any games. So it was all renting and we rented smash brothers and crazy taxi that first night. Um, I remember that very well. Um, And then rented super smash brothers several times before we eventually got to own it. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah. Can I ask who was was your, who was your go-to? Dr. Mario in the black. I would change his, his coat to black. So it looked like Mm -hmm. a cape. Yeah. Um, Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> that was my guy or regular Mario okay. or young link or young link was good. Regular Ooh. link. Um, <laughs> Dude. Or captain Falcon thing smash. Yeah. Um, number four, a movie very close to my family's heart. Um, we rented it so many times that thing you do. Um, oh, I love, I love that thing you do. The Tom Hanks directorial debut. Uh, uh, I don't think I've seen it. Oh, it's such oh. a sweet movie. It is such a warm hearted, wonderful movie. Um, you indeed should watch it. It's okay. basically about this, this band, this American band in the sixties. Um, they have one hit and they just, you kind of chart there and, and, mm-hmm. but it's, it's done. It's if Tom Hanks was a tone, this movie is that tone. Okay, cool. He, he, he it. wrote I've, it and I've directed even, it. I've and, never even heard of this. And he's in it. I like it. Um, How, it's very what, what, good. He is in it. What's, it yeah. what's, the, what's the year? 96, I believe. Okay. Oh, God. So uh, 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 not super young Tom Hanks, but like he'd, a... He'd already like won his Oscars and shit. Right. And so right, he was okay. getting behind the camera for the first time. Cool. Okay. that's That might be this weekend. Yeah, I'm all in. excellent I'm movie. All in. Excellent movie. Dude, I can't recommend killer, it enough. Killer soundtrack too, because there's actually like cool. music they made for like the groups that are in it, and yeah, it's nice. It's, awesome. it's a great yeah. movie. The uh, the guy who wrote the title track just passed away from COVID, but it, he's the uh, guy from Fountains of Wayne. Fountains of oh, Wayne. Okay, yeah. I didn't so know I, that he I, passed I, away. Yeah, 
uh, like near the beginning of the shelter in place, I think. Okay. Did but, he uh, have yeah. any, th- no, you know, I'm not going to go into that. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, I, I don't know. I just, I know it was COVID related. Okay. Um, number three, I always like, I'm not a sports guy, but I loved this documentary. It was called magic Johnson. Always showtime. Um, <laughs> And I just, I don't know. I really, really love Magic Johnson. Um, I Watching him play, if you watch footage of him, the way he would pass the ball and like fake people out. And he, you know, he, he could shoot, but he was more of a team player. He was more about passing the ball and, you know, he didn't need that for himself. He could share. And I always really liked that you know what i mean uh as corny as that sounds i liked the rivalry between him and larry bird everything about him uh was iconic um but yeah and he just seemed like such an approachable nice guy in this documentary um always showtime number two pretty much any of the games in the tony hawk series um i always rented them before i bought them um because we couldn't always afford games games were expensive um, so, but you could rent a game for a little more than you could rent a movie at Hollywood video. And, um, I'll never forget. I gave up video games for Lent the year that the first Tony Hawk game came out and Matthew rented it and I couldn't play it. I just had to watch him play this game that I wanted to play so badly. Um, and you know, two is my favorite but I, I distinctly remember renting three and like not being blown away. And I remember renting four over and over and over again. Four was so good. Thug was so good. Um, and I remember renting Thug 2 and just being like, all right, I think I'm done with the series. Uh, um, you know what? That's funny. Thug 2 was the last one that I got before they, they did a Xbox Xbox. And I think PS3 did a, did a, did a remake, but it wasn't that good. And then they just recently did like the, the legit remake and it's really good. I got awesome. that, and it is yeah. really good. And it because yeah. it goes back with like like the the first the the first two games had like some of the best game soundtracks of like all time. So good. If there's one gripe I have about the new one is that they they bring back the entire catalog of music, but then add a bunch of other shit on top of it. And it's like no, I just want. Can you click? Can you like games. go into settings and take that shit out? Maybe I haven't explored it too Ooh. too deeply because okay. I just can want I... to play. Can I and interject made... like oh, one more time? Was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm, 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 no, that's cool. I'm not trying. I was to about to say, I just, take... I just found out the free skate uh, feature for their online, so we should free skate sometime, dude. Well, you can free skate together yeah. and hold hands. What? <laughs> yeah, it's I'll buy it. Dope. I'll buy it do... just to hold your hand on a skateboard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's pretty cool. I tried it with my coworker the other day and it was super fun. Um, there's like, I, I think there's even like the little game game modes you can do like uh, graffiti and like skate cool. or horse or skate or sorry, skate. I think skate. Can you, uh, can you um, do trick attack too? Tri- yeah. You can do like combo so. attack, like combo, you know, beat the combo and yeah, it's super cool. And I think it's uh yeah, you don't, it's, it's not necessarily local. I think, yeah, you could just invite anyone. I, I believe. So. Cool. So, yeah, and they've so they weird. have made the the R three button the skip track button, okay. which is cool. And it usually goes two old songs, one new, two old songs. You know, mm-hmm. so it's yeah, it's all right. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, funny enough, I got my first my first Tony Hawk game, which was Tony Hawk Pro Skater one, and it came directly from Tony Hawk. Wow, what it. My so in third grade, my best friend was a kid named Will Hawk, and I never like put two and two together until maybe like halfway through the year, like a third of the way through the year. I was like, Oh, Will Hawk, that's kind of cool. It's like, like Tony Hawk, because I was just discovering skateboarding myself at that point. And he was yeah. like, Yeah, that's my uncle, and I was like, uh, No, and then what? his. Yeah. And then his dad came to school like, you know, a couple days later and his dad, uh, his name is Steve Hawk. And he came to our school and he was a part of like a National Geographic crew of the first surfers in Antarctica. They like went and surfed waves in Antarctica as the first people like to ever surf in Antarctica. And he came and did like a presentation and he's like, oh, yeah. And like, 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 here's a picture of me and my brother, like uh, before I left to go 
and it was Tony. And I was like, Oh my God, he's like telling the truth. And then his, his, like we would play Tony Hawk at his house and yeah. his mom, when I got a PlayStation, his mom, like as a, as a gift, she was like, she was like, we, Tony sent us extra copies here. You can have this one. So it like inadvertently no way. came from him. Yeah. And I still have what? it. I still have, I still have that. that <laughs> you, copy. you better still have it. Jesus yeah. Christ. That's, that's awesome. A, that's, well, that's so cool. cool. Story, dude. Yeah. It's, it's a fun. So I've, I've, I've told quite a, I guess quite a few people just, but like whenever, cause Tony Hawk doesn't come up, Tony Hawk pro skater doesn't come up that often. And so when it does, it's like, oh yeah, I got, I got mine from Tony Hawk. <laughs> that is so cool. That is so cool. I, I have such a love Man. for those games. Right on. The new one, dude. It's the best. It's really good. Um, it's, it's number one, I don't know if you guys remember this movie, Daniel Stern, the tall thief from Home Alone, uh, bushwhacked. You guys remember I, this I movie? Think, I, I don't even think I, I've heard of it. Oh man! I've so he's it, like though, kind of like a all, yeah. He's kind of like the city slicker con man type, and through a weird, I forget, unfortunate circumstance, he winds up leading a troop of Boy Scouts um, <laughs> on this like just treacherous mountain camping trip hike thing, and there's like gangsters after him and the fbi is involved it's like it's wild um but it's funny it's a kids movie pretty much um those 90s kids movies were you watch them now and you're like this would be pg-13 today um yeah but uh that was one that like you know we'd always rent like as a as a family um and i just bought it you know maybe 10 years ago because i saw it it's like i i I don't know that i'll need to watch it again um but i want to have this you know um not many people know about that movie. It's a really, yeah, I, I highly recommend it. I'm really sorry if it's not good, uh, but I, I remember really enjoying it. So that's cool. I, I like him too. So he's I'll great. He's really great. Um, and I, w- I was always surprised he didn't blow up more. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You'd think out of like yeah. after like Home Alone, yeah, he was he talented. Be... He was funny. He was very funny. He has like the greatest cinematic scream. Ah, <laughs> yeah, it's very good. He had his own show. I, I want to say it was like ABC or NBC. You know, it was just called Daniel or Danny Daniel. or something like that. You know, and I just remember seeing the promo and he's in, you know, just a Target sweater pretty much. Just <laughs> Danny. And I'm like, oh, this isn't. And I, I don't think it ever aired. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, that's that hard, that's I was like, man, we're going to get. Yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. watch something like that. Harry, right. I'm coming up. <laughs> man, man. What a hole. out for Daniel. <laughs> that was a good what a hole. That was good. <laughs> um, very good. Good list, gentlemen. Great good list. Yeah, great list. Good That's list. fun. There's 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 stuff on each of your lists that I need to watch, which makes me excited because if you rented it twice, if you rented it twice as as a kid even and or as an adult like i feel like we have enough in common for me to get something out of that like yeah anyway so that's i'm 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 hyped that's really cool hell yeah um definitely think you guys will will really enjoy that thing you do um and in fact no indeed you guys would probably enjoy bushwhacked as well dude i know it i I know i enjoy bushwhacked (laughs) yeah it's uh it's good it's a good time so now uh, we, we're going to have another list. And, uh, you know, Sean is a big reason we, would, we wanted to have you on. Um, what are your top five favorite all-time action figures? Are you talking to me, Sean, or other Sean? We're, we're, we're letting our guests go first. Okay. Um, top five action figures. So I actually have my top five action figures with me, like right this here. This is so cool. This is so cool. Um, <laughs> I toy collecting and toy photography are like my biggest like hobby. Um, I love toys. Toy. I. It's funny, kind of how I, I'm gonna just go into a tiny little bit of backstory. Um, I bought a Canon camera to like start filming skateboarding like eight or nine years ago. No, probably yeah, probably around then. Um, and just never got around to it. Cause I didn't understand, like, or not that I didn't get around to it. Like 
there was more equipment needed. There was like, you know, I needed more stuff for my camera to make it work. And so I was like, how can I learn to use this camera? So when I do get this stuff, I know what to do with it. And like, I was on very, very, very early Instagram and like had just started kind of collecting action figures because funny enough, my buddy Will that I think is watching, um, he got me into like comics as an adult. Like I, you know, I read comics here and there as a kid, watched, you know, all the, you know, X-Men animated, Batman animated as a kid, you know, all the, all the movies as a kid. Um, and he got me into comics, like as an adult, which got me starting to like buy like Marvel and like Batman figures, because it was like, these are cool. Like, yeah, why, why wouldn't I want like a physical version of some of my favorite things? And so when I got my camera, it was like, oh, like I, I'd seen people on Instagram taking photos of their toys in really cool ways like using dioramas and, and like, you know, lighting and, phys and, and tangible effects, uh, like doing crazy stuff. And I was like, that would be a great way to learn how to use my camera. And so I learned photography by taking pictures of action figures and like, it kind of just snowballed and became like my, one of my favorite things in the whole world. So, I mean, I oh, have, yeah. I have fucking hundreds, I have hundreds of action figures. I mean, like it's, it's, ridiculous i have way too many figures i'm like surrounded by them right now so i guess <laughs> i will just go into that little backstory i'll go into it um R real Deirdre, quick where can people uh, see your work oh you can see my work on instagram um if you look up at Jonathan's toy vault um and yeah i mean i've got I've, in recent time because of just like school i just graduated school and like work and just not having the space to do it. I haven't done it much often, but I am, I do have a published photo out like in a UK, in a UK toy based toy photography based magazine. So I do have a, a photo that's published in a magazine for toy photography, which is like my only like happy claim to fame for it, um, which isn't really a claim to fame, but I just got like chosen out of like a bunch of people that are like randomly, yeah, you're, you're in. Okay, cool. Um, so it's just something special to me. And Deirdre was like, you gotta, you gotta tell them like, you know, what may, what makes a figure good to you? Like what may, what would make you buy it? Like, like she was like picking my brain. She was like, you know, what, what does make you want to buy a figure? And it's like, well, you know, I, I can, I can buy figures that with a character that I don't even fucking know anything about just because it's like, oh, it's a good figure. It's got good articulation. It's like, it's, it can move well. It, it's got good paint applications. Like it's, it, I've, I've seen other people take photos of it and like what you can do with it. So like, I tend to buy things that I don't fucking need and have any idea about because that's just, I think that's just a part of collecting. And like, if everybody else is buying it, yeah, I need to buy it too. Yeah. Um, but going into it, and I know that Joey will be pretty hyped off this first one. But going into it would be um, the oh. new Marvel Legends uh, Spider-Man. And Love that. this figure is special because uh, this company, Hasbro, makes the Marvel figures. And they have added, they just, it used, it used we thought we had a good Spider-Man back, back a couple years ago. But they've kind of, they've redone this one and it has all this like new technology and it's really, really, really good. And you can like get him into, let me see if I can. Like real Spidey poses. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> you can like get him into like Yo. really, really easily Spider-Man poses. As if Tom swinging, McFarlane drew him. As if, as a, I mean, yeah, that Todd McFarlane has a, it wasn't made by Todd McFarlane, McFarlane but there's a Todd McFarlane like based Spider-Man figure from Toy Biz, which is uh, the company that made Marvel Legends before this one. And it's like one of the Holy Grail Spider-Mans because it's really good too. <laughs> right. But this one, this one isn't like a $150 figure. It was $20. That's great. Um, yeah. So this Spider-Man on a new, buck with new technology that makes him really 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 easy to do spider-man stuff is my number five very cool my number that's five awesome. that's super cool uh <laughs> and going into number four it's uh, i'm kind of i'm kind of going on going with a line on this one kind of with number four is the there's a new power rangers line made by hasbro as well and so I mean, I was a I was a huge Tommy White 
in green ranger red yes. ranger and some of the other oh, stuff yeah. so so like these kind of go hand in hand and they've got really good articulation as well and i mean it's just it's nostalgia to the max with this oh with yeah this line. For sure. and so I've, I've got all the mighty morphins again as a fucking 29 year old adult <laughs> um <laughs> And so like they, they're really cool. I'm really happy with these because I, I sold a Japanese set that I had a few years ago for quite a bit of money because I knew these were coming out and they come with extra hands and they, each of them has, you can pop the head off and put their, like your, your Jason David Frank unmasked head oh, on it, cool. which I, I don't do too often because I prefer them like this. And, but yes, this would be these, the, the, the red and white, or even just the white, because this was the first one that I got out of this newer line, um, holds a special place in my heart for like childhood and just like having really, really, really good, cheaper uh, Power Ranger figures as an adult. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, okay, awesome. and then I'll go, I'll go into number three um, with this is... I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Common Rider or Masked Rider in the States. Um, he, th not this particular writer, but uh, Common Rider is essentially, a lot of people get these guys confused because they're, they're from Japan um, with the Power Rangers. Uh, and because in, in Japan, they came out as Super Sentai and kind of the counterpart to them, kind of a cousin is uh, Common Rider who is, it's essentially the Japanese like superhero, which has been going on for years and years and years. Um, the, you know, that it's called Henshin. They, they transform kind of like the, the Power Rangers would morph, but in Japan, they would, they would, they would transform as well. And it's usually just a, um, a guy who has really good morals or sometimes someone that's really flawed that gets in, get that's, gets a really, really, really strong power and protects people. And uh, this was the first Kamen Rider series that I'd watched. Um, and I fell in love with this character because he uh, he's just there to protect people's smiles. That is what he says. I just want to protect everyone's smile. And so he protects Japan from, from monsters. And this one's really cool because... Uh, it's from a Japanese toy company and they, they just put a lot of, they put a lot of love into these figures and he can, he can kick really well. And I'm not really good at posing on the spot and I, I got to sit there and like pose for a while. If I take a photo of something and I like practice beforehand and like really get the shot going. But this character special, I'm actually wearing Kamen Rider Kuga um, oh, cool. <laughs> for a shirt. I really enjoy this character um, and this figure because it's special to me and as an adult um i love toys <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> um number three bandai makes this figure and then um bandai also made this figure and this figure this number two was kind of my hardest spot trying to figure out because it was like do i i even asked joe i was like is there going to be an honorable mentions because i kind of just want to show a couple other things that i <laughs> that i enjoy like it, as for this as a hobby um, but this one, this one hits really close to home because I purchased it like for retail from Amazon, like right before it, right before you couldn't purchase it anymore. And now it's like a $150, almost like $200 figure, which I wouldn't spend the money on this, but it is from Bandai and it is the SH figure arts, Obi-Wan Kenobi from, Whoa. uh, Revenge of the Sith. And I, I love this figure. Um, I love Obi-Wan just because it's obi-wan and you know that that ending scene in revenge of the sith uh his his dialogue as anakin's burning um on mustafar and you, you are know, my you brother were the, anakin you were, the, you were the chosen one you were the chosen like, one like supposed to destroy like, the sith not join them i love you bring, bring balance to the force not leave it in darkness like oh man and this <laughs> just this i don't know this Ewan will always have a special place in my heart for that. Um, and this figure will always have a very special place in, in my heart because of that. And it's just done really well. I don't know how well you can see it from my camera, but they like, I love the lightsaber on its belt. 
Yeah, but he holds the lightsaber on the belt. I mean, he's got really, he's got full range. And it, and like, I, I wish you could see the likeness because they like, they, they're, a lot of companies aren't painting figures anymore. They're like printing the faces on. So, oh, okay. Like, there's, it looks like Ewan. It doesn't look like an action figure. Like, it, the likeness oh. of Ewan McGregor is there. So, like, that's, is it a sticker? Is it a decal? No, it's like it's it is tiny, 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 tiny little dots that like I don't know how I there's I'm sure there's videos of it, but it is like like I'll I'll send you a picture of it and you can you can send it to Sean like close up like you can see all the parts of the eye. Like it's not just like a dot for the eye there. You can see the retina, the pupil, you can see the color. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. So this one this one's special because it's done so well and and a lot of people like when it first came out we're we're talking about the boots they're like the boots are like way too red i don't know if you can see it but like no they're like pretty much spot on to the film so yeah obi-wan's one of my favorites so that one that one's kind of special to me right on Um, and then should i do a couple honorable mentions before Please does, does do. honorable Please mentions do. ruin your ru- ruin the, the point of top five because no, i feel no, like no, no. as i've thought about it like fuck that's stupid then it's not really a top five it's just a bunch of shit that you like <laughs> go for it no go dude. For it. okay go for it okay and you got and some then... show and, you got some show and tell for us too which is super cool <laughs> yeah we don't we, we usually don't get this kind of thing so <laughs> so I, i've got i've got three honorable mentions I, I, I kept it to three. I was going to bring a Godzilla in, but um, Godzilla probably, I have a bunch of Godzillas and it probably would have made the, the, the cut, but it was way too much to try and get to where my Godzillas are at. Um, so mm-hmm. that's kind of an honorable mention, but these are, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys have some, some love for, for these as well, but the, hold on, Del. Um, NECA, I'm sure you guys have heard of NECA as a toy company, but NECA made uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figures that looked like the original comic Ooh. turtles um, from the late 80s. And they came out and really, really, really fucking expensive. But somebody in China got the molds to make the figures and just started pumping out the, the original figures. All the original turtles in the comics all had the same bandana and it wasn't until they they all, all of them had the same color bandana and they the only thing differentiating them i believe in the comic was their weapons and their names wasn't but, the comic black and white yeah the comic was black and white um and so when they when they made the turtles a show and i think this was there there was a um the toys that made us i think on netflix went into this but when they made it into a cartoon um, all the turtles needed different colors to differentiate them. So these are this, these are a knockoff set of the originals that, and it's a really they're a really good set. I mean, I've had these for years and they haven't broken. I've taken tons of photos, but they all have different colored headset, uh, color, uh, different colored yeah. bandanas, um, and these are a special set. And then they, I also have <laughs> the exact same set, but with them all with red bandanas oh um, shit. same figure <laughs> hell but yeah to, then this is what the originals looked like but i mean those i mean those are like I, I, they go for an astronomical rate and i believe i got each of these for like 30 dollars like for the set so That's cool. and they're no and they're like carbon copies they're like perfect so I, I love turtles and these so these are like a, a special little little set for me um, and then another honorable mention is uh, this little bug named Gomez. And Hello, Gomez. Gomez Gomez is the mascot for a toy company called Mezco. And Mezco makes these, um, I'll be my next two that I'll be showing along with this are Mezco figures, um, makes figures that he's got all cloth. He's really articulated. Um, he's actually a special agent, but this is, I have a special agent. Um, figure of two of them for no fucking reason um but this is him in his streetwear and this is him like when he's not being like a james bond secret agent type um (laughs) so uh mezco 112 collective gomez just a fun cool figure that like 
it's one of those ones like in the toy community that I'm in, like either people love him or hate him. And I'm, I like instantly fell in love with the idea of having a roach looking dude that is kind of a superhero and kind of has its own little universe. So he's dressed just my... like Sean Day. Oh shit. Oh, Yo, is. dude. <laughs> if only had a, like a, if only had his jacket. I mean, it's all I could. I could probably put him into a jacket like that because I have <laughs> other stuff. But yes, he he's dressed That's like funny, John dude. Day. And then, so this honorable mention is more for Joey, even though I fucking love this figure. Like I love everything about this figure. Um, but this is another Mezco figure, and it is a Mezco Batman. There he um, is. And I mean, he's got a cloth. Every he's oh, got. Wow. He's, he's all. He's. I mean, it's a. It's a. Fe- not a felt. It's a. Cloth Vinyl? suit, no, cloth, cloth suit. I mean, he's he's really good. I mean, he's pissed off. I mean, this face isn't the best face for a Batman, but there's other heads that he came with. Um, oh. So they they with Mezco they did uh, they did I believe it was the Ascending Night, and it was like the first appearance of Batman from um, Detective Comics, and it kind of the- I think I actually. Uh, the the point really pointy um, the Bob Kane kind of yeah yes exactly and then so that was like their their first rendition of like Batman's first appearance this was their like uh, their Batman like in his in his in his prime like in the like like almost almost like Hush or you know right the, the 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 seasoned Batman and then their third one that they did um, was I believe this this is a sovereign knight the supreme knight and it's more of a a dark knight returns thick wayne his unmasked head he's fucking pissed off but they they did this and then i also have a little bat (laughs) oh damn it's this thing that's kind of cool that is more newer from mcfarland's making dc toys right now but this works for for batman but it's like it's a a bat raptor so he has a vehicle to that's wild go and yeah that's so, so cool, dude. that was that was more of like joey i want to show you this fucking toy that i got <laughs> and i want to see that shit hell yeah <laughs> okay and sorry i'm sorry for taking so fucking long um you're good you can no, this during. is so this is so cool dude <laughs> so and then so we're we're getting to number one and now this figure is my like my favorite figure of all time this will go i will this figure goes down in history for me because it is one of my favorite comic book characters of all time and joey brought him up earlier and i was like hold up and um it is the mezco punisher yes. and this one i oh, actually didn't realize i actually didn't realize i this is from another punisher figure but usually this one came with the white one i didn't realize that i didn't have the white one on him when i opened up the box and i was like Fuck it, we're just gonna go with this one. But this is it's from Mezco. He's got a cloth. He came with a bunch of guns and the I mean the the guns there um the clips actually Yo, come out. What? Wow. And there's and there's actually I don't you can't see it, but there's a little bullet like in the clip, so you can see the the bullet that's going in. That's the wild. wild. That is um, wild. That's so detailed. Yeah. <laughs> it's, <there's, laughs> Whoa, so this one cool, and it and even it even went to the point where I was there there was a, a this Punisher has come out a couple times in different ways and I missed out on one of them where he like had just a regular Punisher shirt and just kind of like a like this is like military like going into war with his like bulletproof Punisher vest um, but I actually kind of, I had I kind of custom this one with like a special shirt that I had bought and it's the same body, but like I had bought special pants for him. And this is this, I actually, this is a figure that I took a photo of that was published. Um, and it's just him sitting like loading the clip of a gun, like in a, in a, in an armory house, like in a safe house where he's like getting ready to go fucking punish. So these guys go down as like my number one favorite figure of all time, because it's just, it, it's like the closest thing to like a perfect figure I can think, even though it's not perfect, but for me, it's perfect. So like, yes, the Mezco Punisher is my, my number one toy of that's like so all time. Cool. Very <laughs> good. So cool. That's a good list. Thank and thank you, you for the show and tell. That was very cool. Yes. Wonderful. Um, sad. I don't have any of my figures. 
currently. You don't even have uh, one in there? Dude, I remember you used to have so many, dude. I mean, they're at my parents' house. They're just not... I don't have them here. Um, yeah. Sorry. Not any ones that would make my top five. Uh, Jonathan Day, would you like to share with us you, the ones that would make your list? Uh, yeah, real quick. Uh, I Yeah, I, I wish I kept a lot of my toys too, man. I mean, the probably the closest thing I have kept from like my childhood is my Legos, baby. Like in my Legos are at my like, parents' house. <laughs> they're all, sh they're all, sh yeah, they're all in a, just shattered in a box, like somewhere. One day I'm gonna go and like, you know, find those at my, you know, my fam's place and just like, I don't know, go ham on those Legos. But, um, I think the five that I'm thinking of, uh, they just kind of come to mind when I was just growing up, and uh, some of them are, you know, kind of tradi like some of the stuff that you know we love, like Star Wars and all that kind of stuff. So, um, for number five, um, I didn't do Transformers, but I did Animorphs. Do you guys remember the Animorphs? I remember it the books? Like a, I don't remember that they had toys. They had toys. I didn't even they know toys. they had toys. Dude, they had toys, what? and um, I'm trying to remember the one I had. I think I had one that turned into like a spider. So it was like a guy, yeah, guy, and then like all of a sudden you can like, just like Transformers, you can transform them into you know using the little pieces uh, into the animal that they they are. So I had like a spider one, and like a tiger one. I think that was kind of like the only two I had. But wow, awesome. yeah, it was it was very interesting, and um, I think that was why it was so cool like to play with and like you know you could change it into a different animal and you can you know kind of have it be a different thing for a little bit uh, and then the you can go to school was... yeah yeah seriously dude the role <laughs> playing was super high high on that one for sure cool. i was uh yeah so um yeah anim uh, animorphs for five um number four i did have a buzz lightyear uh toy Ooh. for a little bit i'm that's not, meta not, baby yeah, I and, and I wish I was a little bit more because I'm sure there's all sorts of versions of Buzz Lightyear, but it was I don't know if it was like one of the first ones they released, but I remember it had like the buttons. So when you press the buttons, it, it would say the little catchphrases. Um, he had the to infinity laser, and beyond and beyond, and he had the little like <laughs> laser pointer thing. So I think you could press a button and you could see like a little red light kind of. Was it the? Was it the one where you push the red button and the fucking wings pop out? And the out? wings come out. Yeah. Yes, that's the one, dude. It nice. was like, it was kind of bigger. It was like it was it wasn't yeah. like a, a smaller action figure. Yeah, it was a bigger yeah. uh, figure um, from what I remember. Um, but I mean, once you know, Toy Story came out, and you know, even I, I think I owned a Woody. I'm sure it did. But yeah, the when Toy Story came out, it was just like <laughs> I want. I, I'm sure I was just begging. I've had my, several. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure I was begging my parents, like, yo, can you get me this toy, please, Buzz Lightyear, please. I've uh, never asked yeah, my parents this... for a Woody. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. What? Uh, yeah, I'm just fun, saying, you, know, you got to be financially independent if you want to play with a Woody. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah dude or you just or you just do it in your bedroom alone you just do it privately yes <laughs> privately you get your buzz on and you play with your woody <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joe, hey. that's no you know you, as usual i i used to like uh paul schrader is the guy who wrote taxi driver mm -hmm. and if you ever hear him talk he's just this big and uh you know I saw this 12 year old prostitute and I said, I, I found Iris and I told Marty, I found her. And I don't know me and my buddy, our buddy, Danny Rodriguez, who uh, is now an animator at Pixar, but worked on into the spider verse. We would do Schrader's voice, but like him doing commentary about movies that he had no part of. And one of them was toy story. So I did a draft of Toy Story. Me and Marty were gonna do, and uh, you know, it was actually about Woody's Bob's toys. That's why they were named Buzz and Woody. And Woody, oh my god! But Steve Jobs didn't want to go for that. You know, <laughs> anyway, wait, you made sorry. that? Did you you made that up, or here he did that? I made that up. That's fucking great. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's Joey. That's all Joey right there. That's me, oh. baby. Just me. <laughs> I like it. Thank you. Okay. Mm. Uh, let's see. Four. Buzz Lightyear. Three. I've got. 
Uh, I had Qui Gon Jinn from the Star Wars uh, prequel series. Ooh, so those episode I, I one figures were tight. They were pretty dope. Yeah, I I feel like I had a few of the earlier. You know what? I think Joey's the only one I I knew who had like those. You know, from the original trilogy, uh, like some of the older you know Star Wars toys. But when the the like Kenner, yes, yes, yes. with the lightsabers um, but, that popped out of the hand. Oh, the, we're we're getting real old school. Those are the, like, are we the, talking, the OG are we talking seventy seven. Like, pow, power of the Force. Power of the Force. Like, of, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Ooh. Oh gosh, Although I did have a few yeah. of those seventies. I did have a couple of those. Yeah, Joey's right. got some he- hidden gems in there, man. Um, but yeah, when when the prequels came out, like yeah, the the toy lines were just like yeah, I was just like I oh, want to get a Star Wars toy, fucking yeah, you know, Qui Gon Jinn. Um, I think I had a Darth Maul figure two as well from what i remember and I, so going back to like you know shenanigans with my my younger brother um man when we were young we were we i mean i think I, I think that was the first time we were kind of messing with like video cameras too like tape you know tape recorders or whatever and uh i remember we used to uh take the figures and we were we were like so interested in like movie making or something at, at obviously at the time we were so young and I remember putting like little strings on the on the figures, and we would do this thing where we would, you know, with the the you know obviously the Jedi's the lightsabers, and we would have them like we would kind of like tug them, and they would like kind of bounce around, and, <laughs> and it looked like they were fighting each other, and and uh, you know what I uh, this is I, I just talked to my brother recently, and we were just laughing about that because I'm sure there's some videotape somewhere or like you know some tape that we have to have a video camera for that has like a video of that on there, but oh, it was the, that's amazing. And that's, you know, it's it, as a, you know, as a kid, you know, as a younger kid too, it's just like, you know, it's, it's playtime. It, it was time to like, let your imagination just run wild. And, you know, yeah. at the time star Wars was just like, I just fucking love star Wars. And, um, you know, who, who wouldn't want to put your figures in there and, you know, being able to access like a camera or something, uh, was really cool too. So being able to like create, you know, kind of similar to what you're doing, like Sean, with your with your phone. Yeah, like, absol- being absolutely. Able to, to recreate like the scene from Star Wars or create our own stories, and you know, I feel like it spawns from you know just that you know that age of just like imagining all those and that, things. And, like, it, yeah, imagination. It, but yeah, if I could find that video, uh, God, I I would be just like on the floor, just like laughing because I could just remember how funny it was. But like so much fun um, doing that, and it, that's probably the most like fun I had playing with like uh figures and just like remembering that and having it like really instilled and in when i was uh growing up so yeah star wars uh the, the prequel toy series uh i yeah i think qui-gon jinn and i i believe i think i had darth maul so like those two were the ones the, the kind of ones i had the most um so that's three number two um i did have a teenage mutant ninja turtle uh to- um toy but i'd Showing you, you, uh, you showing us a series uh, of different just kinds that came out. Um, I'm not really sure which ones I had. Um, I'm sure they were kind of the the ones when the animated show was out, maybe or, mm-hmm. um, and they kind of closely resembled those th- that take of uh, of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And you know, I was such a fan of like you know the games were awesome. Um, yeah, Turtles in Time. Yeah, dude. Yeah. So like of course you know knowing the games it's like oh I want you know my hands on the toys and I want to you know become yeah. these characters and all that kind of stuff so um, I I feel like I had I, I'm not sure who which character I had I'm, I'm trying to remember the, off the top of my head but um, you know I think I had like probably the four in the end like at least the four of them um, all of them at one point um, so yeah Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for number two uh, and then number one. Dude, I I collected Batman toy uh, toys as well, dude. You know, as a, as a kid, um, you know, we had all these Batman movies come out. You know, Batman you know eighty nine came out, and they yes. had like I think they had figures for that. Um, I remember having this like, it was like a Bat Cave or something. Like it, it was a Bat Cave, and you would put like, there was like a Bruce Wayne character you could get. And he had like a little, it's almost like a little elevator. And it was like, you put him inside and he like, you, he like, you could like twist the, the elevator thing. And then he, he appears and you were supposed to put le- the Batman figure on Batman, the other end. Yeah. <laughs> and so when you do that, put him in, it, it goes up and then he turns into Batman. And it was like the coolest 
fucking thing ever. And I was just like, this is so cool. And, um, you know, of course, it was Star Wars and Batman. Like, growing up, that, like, those were, like, the two, like, big things that I was just so into. Um, and especially Batman. Like, just, of course, playing action figures with Batman and just trying to become the Dark Knight and going through all the motions. And, and then, you know, of course, these cool, like, little sets, too, that kind of come with the... Uh, with the figures, um, I never really did co- like further collect all the, all the other Batman stuff. But at that time, I think like in the '90s, like when you know the the '89 movie came out, and then I think even the Batman Forever stuff, like like those kind of movies, yeah, they had like they had all the weird they had all the weird armor too that they had all the different costumes. So they made fi- I think they made figures for those as well. Yeah. Um, do we know? So, do yeah. we, does anybody remember if the Batmans had nipples? If the figures had nipples too? Ooh. <laughs> well, that's a good question. I don't think they did. I feel like, did, did, yeah, did they? Would they? I don't think they did. And that's, I'll do. That's I'll do some I research later. <laughs> yeah, because oh, that's right interesting. <laughs> bat bat um, nipples, man. The the the, uh, the latex uh, nipples, man. The rubber nipples. Let me mention it. Uh, what's Hot Toys just revealed their uh, Batman Forever figures? They did, they're doing a Batman Robin. Ooh, what? Mm-hmm. I, I mean. Damn, I didn't hear about uh, that. No, wonder... no nipples. No nipples. No nipple. No nipples. Is it, no but nipples on the Batman list? Forever toys. Uh, but what about nipples on the um, on the hot toys? The hot toys on the Robin one. But it's the okay, it's wow. the sonar suit. Um, Batman. So no nipples on the sonar suit. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Are they gonna do a regular suit Batman with hot I toys? I don't do know. You? I hope so. Are you gonna get these hot toys? If I had gotten the Hot Toys, <laughs> I would have gotten the Heath Joker. Yo, yeah, that's a good one. These look so... Whoa, these look awesome, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's legit. Tony, that's a good list. Beautiful hey, list. Yeah. It's a good list. I, you know, I, I kind of regret not keeping some of these toys around. And, and, As you uh, should. But it, it's funny, like, uh, Sean, you're, you're mentioning, like, you know, you're a collector and, uh, you know, I follow like a few podcasts and like channels and, you know, some of them are collectors themselves. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm aware of like the, the collector's culture behind toys, especially like hot toys that, you know, I, I, there's some, a lot of people like probably collect all the hot toys series and it's, it's such a huge part of the kind of culture of, of, uh, collecting. So it is, I, I it's just, like, like... Uh, it's fucking ridiculous. It re- it really it really is because sometimes it's like it's like it honestly sometimes it's like that's great. I need three of them. I need three uh, of them. <laughs> like why? Well, you never know. Like what? Like one could break. One could honestly break. Um, like the <laughs> it's it's yeah it's. I mean, how many stormtroopers I have? I couldn't even tell you, but. <laughs> And I literally just hear my girlfriend go, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the collecting. <laughs> Joey says hi, Deirdre. <laughs> she says hi. Uh, but yeah, collecting is, it's a bug. It's, it's something special to me. It's ridiculous. I mean, honestly, I probably would collect the hot toys if I had A, the money and B, the space because like you gotta I mean, have like dedicated shelving just for those guys yeah. or no, 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 a dedicated no, no. Like, case I, 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 case because i mean you're just gonna yeah. get dust i mean i get dust on some of this shit but this is a lot smaller but the hot toys good lord yeah damn good lord joey what are your top five i'm action I'm, figures. I'm, I'm excited action figures well action figures um, number five was going to be Tommy, the Green Ranger, uh, of the, with Mighty Morphin action when their heads would flip. The head? Oh, the flip head, uh-huh. yeah. Oh, um, yeah. And I did love those, but you already mentioned, uh, Tommy. So I'm going to knock him off, uh, number five and put in Todd McFarlane's Austin Powers line. Ooh. Um, oh, that's right. I remember, yeah, I remember these Yes. Ones. Yeah. I absolutely love Dr. Evil. And I would do kind of like you were saying, Sean, because uh, I, I had a bunch of the Austin Powers figures. So I would have my video camera and I had, I'd have my dad and my brother with string, you know, moving the Austin Powers figures or just say, <laughs> fuck it and shoot medium close ups and have, you know, hold them and do that. Um, 
but yeah, isn't that wonderful that how we would kind of just use our imaginations and tell stories? You know, I remember when we had a bunch of the Return of the Jedi action figures, we didn't have, you know, Jabba's sail barge, but we had a Kleenex box and that was, yeah, that worked. You know what I mean? That um, became, that became that. That yeah. became, yeah. Um, I, I think toys are really good for development. You know what I mean? Um, and they're I'm, not, I'm still usually, developing. Yeah, exactly. They're not usually looked as in that way. But anyway, getting off my soapbox. Um, number four, I'm going to go with the 1977 Kenner Obi-Wan Kenobi with the lightsaber coming out of the arm. I I do have him somewhere. And uh, it's a figure very near and dear to my heart. Obi-Wan is my favorite character in all of Star Wars, especially the Alec Guinness version. Um, Sir Alec Guinness. But... Uh, yeah, I love that figure, and it's wild. It's cool. So right now, like not right now, maybe four or five days ago, Hasbro literally oh, announced. Oh, I read about it. You, do you, have you seen it with the plastic the Amazon case? exclusive? Yeah. yeah. The, yes, yes. The, that is coming out. And um, just going back to your Green Ranger thing, uh, Hasbro is reissuing flip heads right now. So you could Whoa. get a flip head yeah. Tommy. Um, that's pretty cool. So that's I got my fingers just... stuck in those things so many times. <laughs> just like, ah, um, that's so, cool. oh. that's so cool. They're doing that stuff. Oh man. That's awesome. it's pretty rad. It's well, pretty they got rad. Qui-Gon coming too. They have Qui-Gon in the OG, like it's a six inch figure, but in the OG flat card, um, Phantom Menace packaging, it looks just like the one that you bought as a kid. Uh... But it's but it's twice the size and like has the photo awesome. printed face and everything. Am that's I going to become out a too. toy collector by the end of this podcast, dudes? <laughs> oh, man, most likely. Oh, yeah, uh, <laughs> number three, I I have such an affinity for the. I mean, the animated series is my favorite show of all time, Batman the animated series, and their toys. Um, Almost 10 years ago, less than 10 years ago, uh, DC Direct started doing uh, animated series figures. And I have to say, I was pretty disappointed with uh, most of the molds for those figures. Um, I thought the 1992 or three Kenner line did those characters way more justice um, than any of the DC Direct action figures did, except for maybe like Two-Face or something like that. Um, and these Kenner figures are also very inventive, you know, like Mr. Freeze, you could fill his pack with water and shoot it. Or, you know, Scarecrow, you could shine a light through something and it would project, you know, there was just different, they, they were unique and they had, they were trying stuff, which was cool. It didn't always work, um, but they were trying it. But, and to kind of speak to your point, Sean, about, you know, um, they would have the same Batman mold, but they'd paint him purple and green and red and blue and yellow. And, you know, all right, now it's Safari Batman. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh my God. It never appeared, but you could get waffle plate Batman. You could get, mm -hmm. you know, sonar Batman. Um, and I had all of them. And, um, but combat belt Batman was the only one that was, he was in the gray suit um, and he was accurate to how he looked in the show. And I had maybe two or three or four of those figures during my time. Now they're extremely expensive. You can't get them. Um, it's like 125, 150 bucks to get that packet or that figure still in the package. Mm -hmm. Mondo put out a beautiful figure. It's 200, 250. Um, the, I think it's more now. Probably. I wanted the, the one where the cape did this. The flow. And that cape, was yeah. that was the exclusive, the Mondo exclusive. Uh -huh. Um and I asked my wife at the time to get it for me and she didn't, and now we're divorced. And um <laughs> it was meant to be funny, guys. Please laugh. Um <laughs> Well, I was saying, yeah, she didn't get it for me if I can divorce her. Honestly. <laughs> um <laughs> no. <laughs> But no, I really want that figure someday. But until then, Combat Belt, Combat Belt Batman is still my favorite. Um, I love those figures so, so much. Um, they're great. They're great. And um, I mean, this list could all be Batman figures, really. Um, I, the DC Direct ho long Halloween figures are some of the most beautiful 
figures, not in terms just in terms of mold, in terms of painting, in terms of how they captured Tim Sale's art style and and turned them into 3D figures. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm talking about them. They didn't make my list, but man, wow. I love those figures. Um, anyway, was, one of those was actually one of the first like adult as as an adult figures that I bought was one of the the long Halloween um, in the big in the big square box. Um, oh, I had them individually. Me and my buddy would get them at cons. Uh, okay, okay. We had Two Face, Joker, Batman. We were gonna like share them, and then yeah. he never. It's our buddy Dan who works for Pixar now. He needs to get me. He needs Did to he return those to me. Never. We were going to trade off, and I think I had Two Face and he had Batman, or vice versa. And you and know, we were you like had that share custody. You had that because of Magic Johnson too. You had that sharing, like because of Magic. Exactly, Johnson. exactly. Like, you Thank learned, you, Magic. He didn't watch. He didn't watch that, so he didn't it's have true. that sharing. That's <laughs> true. Um, <laughs> I like that. I like that connection. <laughs> um, number two. I'm going to go Kenner power of the force, the entire line. I had the entire line. I've still got, so what we would do is big beefy Luke. We, when we get a figure, <laughs> we'd get mine that we'd keep in the box and we'd get my brothers and we'd open Matthews and we'd play with his. You're such um, a, you're such a, a shit older brother for that. <laughs> no, the ones in the box, we'd gonna, hang, we'd his. hang around the wall of the room <laughs> and eventually okay, that's... It, it went all, all the way around the room. It was pretty cool. Um, okay. That is cool. <laughs> But uh, if I had to pick one figure, it'd probably be Vader with a removable helmet just because he was like the holy grail the, of the line that we looked for for years and couldn't find and finally tracked down when I wasn't collecting them anymore. But I was like, I have to buy it because I finally have got my hands on it, you know. Um, but I loved all those figures and I've still got them under my parents' house. They're all still in the box, original packaging and all that shit. Um, I'm going to sell them. I, need to sell them. I, don't, I, I, I don't know if they're quite worth much money anymore now yeah I don't know. I don't that's know. the shitty that's it's, tw that's, it's that's 25 really, years it is but like it's you know it's it's funny it's funny how 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 the toy how the toy game works because <laughs> like in it and it and i'm and i'm and i'm and I, I, now i feel like a dick i'm not like trying to no, shit no. on on, on your stuff it's like it's stuff that like I don't even know how to explain it. Like the stuff that's like in right now, like all all that stuff is amazing, and that stuff had really great value. And then like I guess I guess what I'm trying to say is right. Like what the era that we're in right now is the golden age of of toys. Like they are not they like they are not making toys like how they, these toys that they're making now have never been made like this before. They are so good that like like. I just I feel like I'm like shitting on your stuff and I'm not trying to No, no, no. I mean because I love because I, I, I didn't love, make the I love fucking those, toys. <laughs> I, lo I love those too. Um but like the way that the toy game works now is like so like a Darth Vader figure from like 6 years ago could have been like a really rare thing because they stopped making it and then they just they continually are making figures better now which make the older ones obsolete which is kind of shitty because I have a but that's bunch fair. of like that's Vader natural. figures where I like really like them and then new ones came out and I was like, well, this is a piece of shit now, like compared to compared to this. So like they're, they're kind of in a constant state of like upgrading and and one upping. But we should I, I don't want you to and I don't want you to sell your toys either. Those are like you're, you're you'd sell them and then in a few years be like, fuck, why did I why did I get rid of that? But see, that was the thing is when I was like a child as if I had to justify to my parents them spending their money to buy me toys. It was like, I'll sell them one day and go to college. And that, I mean, I went to college, but I didn't sell the toys. But if I ever, <laughs> I want to sell them in probably my comic collection to like finance my first film. Yeah. Fair enough. And that's, yeah. that, that would, that would be cool. That would actually be really cool. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, my collection ain't worth shit, but you know, some, maybe someday. Um, number one though is from I think it's probably from the Batman Returns line it's Bruce Wayne with quick change Batman armor so it's a Michael Keaton figure and it's the first toy I ever remember playing with um, and I've had probably three or four of these figures throughout my life 
and he has the chest plate. He's got the the cowl and the cape is attached, boots, gloves, and like a radio and a batarang or something. Um, cool. And it's it's awesome. You know, you get both Bruce Wayne and Batman, and like I loved you know having him in the suit, but without the cowl or with the cowl, and like you know, yeah. Um, like he's sitting at the Batcave. Like right. He's in the back computer. I love that figure. I love that. And it looks, it looks like Keaton and it. And when he puts on the cowl, it looks like Batman. And um, when I was a kid, we were playing, you know, Matthew was very, very young, like probably couldn't talk yet in a diaper, you know, and I'm playing with that figure and I'm like, okay, where's the boot? Shit. Matt had eaten the boot. <laughs> But this was my favorite figure, so I was like, "Mom, you gotta watch his poop. You gotta watch for that boot." Um, you know, Did the boot ever come out? It came out, and she boiled it and gave it back to me. <laughs> Did the boot still fit? Yeah. Wow. Yo. Yeah, because it didn't have it didn't have a back. It like wrapped around. Okay. The leg. Yeah. 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 Okay, that makes sense. Oh, and like, okay, almost like it, like. I'm, a, I'm looking this figure up. I'm going to send it to you guys so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, I feel like I know what you're talking about. That's fucking hilarious, though. Matt ate the boot. Yeah, big time. <laughs> Dude. So that was, uh, yeah, I but I love that figure so much. Um, and 60 bucks on eBay? <sighs> can't do it this pay period but maybe in a couple pay periods um, i'll find it i can find it <laughs> let's see oh, and i want that one the dark knight collection because that's from the first batman oh movie. yeah that's sick but then they re-released it, does, it, it does as look well like Keaton. yeah and but they re-released it and they didn't even bother repainting him they just put it you know with a new uh backing board uh -huh. so there's the dark knight collection and then the the uh batman returns collection which is hilarious that they didn't even bother repainting the figure i'm mean, that i feel like that happened a lot probably especially just back re, then mm -hmm. i feel like a lot of the star wars figures were just like completely just re repackaged just yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yep there it is yeah Dude, this is it's, yeah, but uh, yeah, I love that figure. I love him so much. Um, that's my five babies. My Great five. five. I like that. Great dude. five from both of you. Thank you. All around, pretty all, good list. All, all around, around, man. Um, and it's it's cool to have a, a a toy collector too. Like that was, I think that was really interesting. Like hearing your story with toys and you know and thank you. That, you know. So this was fun. This was, us. It, it, very, very seldom do I get to uh, talk about toys with a with an audience or just talk about <laughs> toys um, with people outside of like the same three people that I talk about toys with. So <laughs> this is a lot of fun. A lot of fun, man. Yeah, we love it. We love it. Um, this was good. Look good. Um, all right. Well, usually we uh, like to uh, we do a little a little share time, things that we maybe we have been watching or a game that we've been playing or some cool piece of tech or anything that we've discovered that we're like, hey man, I want you to know about this. Um, Sean, you I, I didn't tell you about this part of the show, so you can collect your thoughts. Jonathan Day, do you have anything you'd like to share with our dear, sweet, lovely, imaginary audience this week? Uh, it's super random. I watched randomly, just was blowing through like HBO Max, and I this saw was random. This uh, this is real random here, guys. Uh, it's a movie called Deja Vu. Have you guys ever seen this movie? Deja Vu. Uh, Denzel has Denzel Washington, dude. I've never seen it. Uh, okay. If you watch it, uh, Sean, have you seen Tenet yet? I have not seen Tenet yet. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna. Just slow. I'm not gonna say anything about the movie, but Deja Vu. Okay. I th I think I think Tenet ripped from De from Deja Vu. It's like literally the same movie. Motherfucker, really? You know what? I feel it feels more like more people it. have not called Chris Nolan out on this because I believe that Inception is comp is the Matrix with a new paint job. Kinda. Yeah. 
It's kind. Of, I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not dissing on Tenant. I, I, I did watch it's it. on Tenant. It's a shit movie. Made. It's 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 a little confusing. Yeah. Um. But it, it's funny because the I was watching that uh, Deja Vu movie and I was like, oh, this is this cool Denzel movie. Like, I was like, man, this kind of like this just reminds me of something. And I was like, oh yeah, like this kind of feels like Tenant a little bit. And it's not. I'm not saying it's the exact movie. Uh. It just it has very. I think I'm sure it's probably. Nolan probably pulled some inspiration, I think, from this movie, or at least, you know, that's what I, how I feel about it. But um, I th- actually thoroughly enjoyed Deja Vu. It's, it's, I don't know when it came out. It was like, I don't know, 2000 and, let's see, Deja Four? Vu. 2000 and, oops, I, not Deja Vu Strip Club. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Except later. <laughs> 2000 and, uh, 2006, Deja Vu. Um, that was my other guess. And I actually, I thoroughly enjoyed it. They kind of throw you into it, and that's maybe why it reminded me of Tenet. And Sean, if you do see the movie, uh, they kind of just throw you into the movie, like the character. Okay. I would. The main character doesn't really get like a backstory. I would say they kind of just <laughs> throw you into it. So it it, Got it it had that feeling when I watched Deja Vu. I was like, man, okay, we're just kind of like going into this person's, this detective's like life and. You know, mm-hmm. that's it. You know, we don't get any like, you know, he had a wife or a kid or whatever. None of that ha- matters. So that's kind of like why I felt it was very similar. But I did enjoy Deja Vu and I never saw it. I just, it's like random de- like Denzel Washington movie. And uh, I do recommend it for anyone who would like to watch it. So cool. There you go, guys. Excellent. Yeah. Very good. Uh, good. Very um, good. Inception has uh, shot for shot similarities with Paprika 2006. So thank you, Termina. Ah. I didn't know what it, I've never even heard of paprika. Uh, you know what? Uh, is that I believe it's salt film? and pepper mixed together. <laughs> is is that I don't the think animated? that that's paprika. It maybe. I don't know. Oh wait, wait. Are you talking about blues clues? Paprika. <laughs> you said salt and pepper mixed together and in blues clues Mrs. Salt and Mr. Pepper have a baby called Paprika. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Dude, um, that, is a, that is a pull right there. Paprika <laughs> is an is that it's anime. Okay, that's, oh, it's yeah, also that's drama right. and it's also fantasy. Animated boo. Oh my god, Blues Clues. Yes, yes. We're big <laughs> Blues Clues fans on this podcast. Um, very nice. Uh, Sean, uh, Pete, would do you have anything that you'd like to share with our sweet audience, or uh, would you like me to go and you can? keep collecting no no i can go so i've um i have been watching for the first time like all the way through and as an adult the fresh prince of bel-air on um, on amazon prime or not amazon prime hbo max sorry hbo max um and i am enjoying it so fucking much um Will Smith is a great actor and I think, and I, I think he'll always be a great actor, but you know, I, I went into it like thinking back to what I remember as like from, you know, growing up watching it here and there um, thinking like, you know, I had a, an idea in my head that like the show was like a, was a really whitewashed show going into it because they're they're really you know they're really well off and they're in Bel Air but I like and that was just me thinking out of my ass because like of what I remember but like you know as a kid you don't realize how much like wonderful things are put into some like wonderful messages are put into things and like like the sh- it's bl- it's blowing me away because of like how much like black pride is in the show and how much they they did put forth that like just being you know a young dumb white kid never picked up on any of it um but like just the 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 references to malcolm x and the references to um uncle phil and aunt viv like fighting the power like in college and like like and wanting to continue that and like instill values in their in their kids to like to to fight for what is right and it's like just been real like aside from it being like a great comedy i think that it's i I think that that aspect of it 
what just went completely over my head as a kid. And like, just in the times that we're in now, it's like, fuck yeah. Like, like, like this is, this was ahead of its time. And like, it's wonderful. And it's something that, that, that makes me really happy to like revisit and see that, that the audiences watching that, like, as it was coming out, like had those messages, like relayed to them in, in some kind of way, you know, on a very, white orient like like television has been for white people mainly like for years and just seeing that like in the in the early 90s that like this that there were these messages going on like really it made me happy because you know everybody should feel included everybody should you know have their stories told and have things like that they can relate to and learn from so that was like, that's like the biggest thing that I've pulled from this watch right now. And it's like, it's just made me really happy. And it, it's, it's something cool that, that I wasn't expecting because I just didn't realize it as a kid or even knew, you know, was too, was too young to, to really realize any of it. So that's, that's the, that's the thing that I'm watching. That's like, this is, this is really cool. It makes me happy. Hell yeah. I that's like awesome, that. Dude. I, like I, I might do a rewatch on uh, Fresh Prince as well, man. <laughs> Dude, it's, and, and and you know, I I don't I don't typically laugh out loud by myself. Like I think the only one of the only times that I like with a show I watch Parks and Rec over and over and over again, and there are there it, every time I rewatch it, there are different parts that I like find myself laughing out loud at. But like I like just some of the lines in the Fresh Prince, I'm just fucking dead, and I'm like. I'm not a person that laughs out loud a lot, but like alone, but this, this is one of those shows where I'm like, like at least twice an episode, like I've got like a, ha, that was good. That was a fucking good line. <laughs> so it's a, Hell it's yeah. been a lot of fun. Awesome. Man. I like it. Fresh pits. What about nice. you, Joey? I am going to recommend uh, two local restaurants. Um, Ooh, it's food. Yeah. Yeah, first I'm going to give a shout out to um, my brother's good friend, uh, Fuad. He's got a place uh, over in Berkeley called IB's. It's uh, cheesesteaks. Very good. Picked up um, a bunch of that for my family the other day and brought it back over to Daly City and whew, rolled me home. It was delicious. <laughs> um, and then right up the street from me, literally 200 feet away from my front door is a lovely Italian place called Amarena. Um and, you know, like most places in the pandemic, especially here in San Francisco, I don't know how it's been for you guys in your areas, but we were, you know, under the mandated, uh, you can't even have outdoor seating anymore. And restaurants were really hit hard by this. And it was really amazing to see um, all the restaurants in my neighborhood kind of band together just on social media and help each other out and be like, you know, go to them or come to us or, you know, we're struggling. And um I got a text message from Amarena one night when I was out walking Marty and just uh, saying like, you know, until we're able to reopen again, bottles are 50% off bottles of wine and all of our pasta, we're talking 20, $25 pastas are 12 99. It's like, wow. Got to take advantage of this. Mm -hmm. So um, Alicia and I ordered some pasta and we go the, you know, they're like, okay, it'll be um, 40, 45 minutes about eight o'clock. Okay. I set a timer. We go and we walk out there and there's just a bunch of people waiting outside. Um, they're running behind, you know, um, because everyone's trying to take advantage of this deal because we're all pieces of shit. And, um, <laughs> you know, everyone, like you get a sense within five minutes that, Oh, these people have been waiting and we're going to be waiting. Mm -hmm. And the owner comes out with, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I should be putting him on blast here, but he's, he's got glasses and a bottle of Prosecco. He's like free booze, free booze. And just starts <laughs> pouring it up for everyone. And it was like, everyone was so attention deprived that everyone is like, we're making friends with everyone else. Oh, hey, yeah, it was pretty good. Oh, yeah, was, I love this place. Um, and we were out there for maybe an hour, almost an hour. And just, having a great time just like That's cool you know um it felt like so kind of uh old world community neighborhood just kind of um so yeah i just you know give them a shot i've had them twice in the past couple of weeks amazing food amarena um over on larkin and green check it out uh cool. and ib's in berkeley 
And there you go. Good food. I'm into it. Good food. Good food. Um, Sean, thank you again for coming on. Where, once again, can everyone find your work on the internet? If you want to look at my old photos, because I haven't taken photos in a while, um, but I will be very soon. I will. I, I plan to get back. You can find me on Instagram um, at, at Jonathan's Toy Vault. Wonderful. I'm sure if you just even type in Toy Vault, it would pop up. Um, if you, no, I don't want to spell out my name, um, but it's it's. I'm just too lazy. But uh, yeah, it's a bunch of A's. Yes. Yes. Except for that everywhere. you. Right Except on. for that you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, very good. Very good. Jonathan Day, where can we find more of your work on the internet this week, my friend? Uh, find me on Instagram at Sean Day Music and on my website, SeanDayMusic.net. Yes. yes. That's, 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 Joey, that's, where can we find you on the internet? You can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at Joey Prati and on my website, JoeyProdi.com. You can check out the show at Top 5 Pod. That's T-O-P-F-I-V-E 5 P-O-D on Instagram, on Twitter, on YouTube at gmail.com, and on Facebook at Top 5 Podcast. We're on Apple Music, Google Play, SoundCloud, and now Anchor. So please give us a like, give us a listen, give us a follow, give us your love, and we will give you, Jonathan. Uh, all the fantastical loves in return, y'all. Every week, it, every week, <laughs> every week, it's the same thing. All the fantastical <laughs> loves in return. Until next time, I'm Joey Prati. I'm Sean Day. And I'm Sean P. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you for coming on, man. We should, we got to do this so much again. Fun. Oh, I'm all in. Right on, <laughs> right on. All right. Um, thanks for Okay, that's where you want to spice it up. Yeah, I'm trying to do some effects now. <laughs> so spicy. So spicy. <laughs>